A little bit of uh, ad hoc film. Uh, you'll have to forgive my vision because I've got a very bright light blasting in my eyes now. But a few of my YouTube people have said, what do I use for my foxing setup? Well, here it is. Starting from the ground up, I'm hoping you can see this because it's pitch black. And uh, we've got Viperflex uh, Journey sticks. I've also got the fifth leg on these. This is what I use for 99% of my foxing shooting. Front to back on the rifle. Well, the rifle itself is a Mauser M18 243. Um, this is not an expensive rifle, but it's a rifle I actually very much like, regardless of its cost. Uh, it's accurate, it's reliable, it's trustworthy. Most important, you're out foxing at night, you come home, and if you go inside your house, you'll get a layer of condensation will appear immediately on the rifle. This needs drying off before you put the gun away, as well as doing things like, you know, take the bolt open, make sure you take the moderator off, everything like that. Um, and it's one of the, it's kind of a hard test I give to a lot of guns because if you don't look after them, they will react badly to that. And it doesn't matter if it's stainless or not, because stainless only means stains less. Anyway, right, front to back on the rifle, we have got a Freyer and Devic titanium moderator, which you may or may not be able to see in the picture there. It's, um, it's lightweight, it's pretty good for sound moderation. Most importantly, it's a sporting moderator. It doesn't make the gun too bulky. It's reflex and you don't you know, have this great weight on the end of a slim barrel. Harris bipod. Um, I don't really know why I have it on, to be honest, because I hardly ever use it for other than zeroing or occasionally if I've got a bonnet to shoot off or something like that. I somehow feel a rifle to me, I've, I've shot with Harris bipods or bipods of other brands for so long, a rifle without a bipod just seems to be missing something. So that's just me, blah, blah, blah. The scope, this is a Sightmark Wraith HD. I've used the 4K, 4K has gone back just because it wasn't mine. The HD is, you know, it's a long term loan example from Scott Country and I find it very reliable. I like using it and with the illuminator on top, I've got full control and I've also got, let's see if I can show you this on the other side. I've got a fishing coaster on the other side, which allows me fingertip control of focus and when the foxes are moving in coming in and out on you i do like to be able to focus it so easily and although some people say oh have you got weak hands or something i say no i just like to be able to focus it with a fingertip and nothing more because when the gun is in a delicate position on sticks why waste effort Uh, on top of that, we've got a little bit of a, a bodged mount to set up here. This is actually a Boris um, XTR signature ring on top. Uh, 30 millimeter, it's packed up and it's got a PBIRL illuminator on it. That is working for me out to 300 meters. The only thing I've got to be careful of is that where I shoot, there's some you know, fences, fence posts, this, that and the other. Tonight's been a particular example actually. Um, and if you get reflection, you need to dim it down because the reflection, you know, wipes out your tube and everything like that and you, you know, you lose image quality. Funny enough, tonight, the first fox I shot, both times it stopped. It happened to stop right behind or right next to the line past the fence post. So, cause I got this load of reflection coming back and the screen auto dimmed. I got it in the end, but it was a bit of a faff of a shot. The second fox, funny enough, about an hour later, pretty much followed the exact course of the, of the first one. They were both vixens. They were both pretty smelly, um, well in heat. Uh, but yeah, you could almost trace its, its path millimetrically. It followed where the first one exactly gone, where it doubled back and where it got shot. And we shot, the second one was probably shot not 20 metres from where the first one had been shot. Having a bit of a steady night tonight, we were under cover somewhere, so we, um, we didn't really feel like walking around too much because it's very cold as well. But you know, sometimes it's like that. What else can I tell you about this setup? Um, I've got a, on the side, I've got an elasticated cheek piece 
uh, wrap with a, a rubber cheek piece razor underneath it just gives me a slightly better head position you'll see i've got my ammunition put in there and you'll see it's a little bit bumpy with a wire here well i've also got a backup wire which is running there's a 5000 milliamp hour um usb kit inside here which if i show you the back you might be able to see the little blue lights on there green lights because the power in fact no it's, it's turned off now let me just see if i can just turn this back on if it's not actually being used it, it goes to sleep which is good because it means you've got two power sources and you've got no worry at all about it running out so i can just leave it on all night that's also very easy to charge i just stick a usb-c lead in the back of it it's done in a few hours um also in this elasticated pocket which um i i described to my friend dave this evening as something slightly more sinister um it's like a garter belt and you might t anyway that's got the two well a spare battery in there and a spare one in the illuminator for lighting up proceedings and this gun has been used a lot it is my go-to rifle foxing i've quite happily shot out to 250 meters with it but i can quite happily watch them out to 300 as well uh, i don't really need to because the foxes around here they're not particularly savvy and they do tend to um, respond to calls if anything the two this evening were two of the less savvy ones but they did certainly seem to be distracted by something even if it wasn't my calls attracting them so what can we finish up with here there's um there's a hornady sling on the rifle pretty standard stuff you might see there's a bit of vet wrap on the sticks it just when i'm holding on to them the aluminium sticks it just stops my hands getting quite as cold if i possibly can i don't wear gloves when i'm out foxing so i can you know squeak to my fingers and whatever uh, i'm no professional at it but you know i seem to be able to manage something with that and that's about it so um the last detail is probably to tell you that uh, it's a pretty high speed round the 24375 uh, you can shoot 58 which are even quicker and shoot even flatter but i like the wind resistant capability of the 75s and they seem to just shoot the suit the rifle well um i'm zeroed basically spot on at 150 meters which means point blank zero i just point and shoot in fairness the two i've shot tonight they were i don't know 75 80 meters away and uh, maybe a little bit high on them but it's certainly uh, very it's it's a decisive round the 243 foxing so I won't say you need bigger, I won't say you need better. Uh, I've done a lot with the 223 and 22250. 223 probably the most. The one thing I'll say about the larger case rounds, and this actually came in tonight because I'm only human, I did miss one tonight. Um, I, I got it with a backup shot though. Um, if you've ever got to fumble with ammo in the dark, the larger 243 and 22250, I do find are a little bit easier, especially if you've got very cold fingers. Um, I also find that generally rifles will mag feed them. You know, generally, I, I, I generally find the larger rounds mag feed a little bit slicker. That's not to say that, you know, there aren't loads of plenty of good rifles that shoot 223 fine, but that's just my preference. In the dark, in the cold, if I've got to fumble about for a spare round or anything additional, I prefer the larger 243. It is noisier. Um, I won't say it's not. So there we go. That's what I use when I go foxing. Uh, I might put some video of tonight's foxing um, on. Oh, I forgot one of the major points. Of course, here we go. This is a Hick Vulcan 35. I've been using this for about six weeks now. I'm a big fan because I don't get any eye problems at ice train with it because the number one factor, it's got an excellent ocular lens on it and it's also got a rectangular uh, shroud around it. So you can use either eye completely intuitively from either hand and the buttons on top and you don't get that you know visual imbalance from using just one eye with an eye cup rotator one way or the other so yeah that's it now none of this is the most expensive kit i've ever reviewed none of this is it's kit i just think it's very very good value for money and if somebody said to me you know where's the point you'd come in at with with night vision or, or with thermal this that and the other you've got to i've got to say that i've used extremely expensive gear the critical thing is do i shoot any fewer foxes because i've not got you know a thermal imager that's not three thousand pounds more expensive than the hick this is about 1800 that's about 600 that's about 200 rifles i don't know maybe 800 pounds um i think the moderator is about 300 so you know it's not super cheap kit 
it's certainly not mega expensive kit but it's kit that i don't find myself wanting for more and i, I shoot so many different rifles and, and sights and this that, and the other so the point being that i don't think oh i wish i had such and such a rifle with me tonight or oh i wish i was using such and such a sight you know what so a lot of them all fail to the same problems you get reflection off posts or, or, or foliage things like that and you know you soon get the auto dimming problems with, with anything doesn't matter how good it is so it's all about what you've got you know what you're comfortable with um if i'm going to be brutal well the thermal probably cost the same as the rest of it and i have to say i would go back to using a lamp on a scope before i'd go back to foxing without a thermal um it makes life you know it does make life a lot easier so there we go right hopefully that's been a bit of handy help to you to what someone who shoots professionally uses and why um there we go bye for now